All right, so yeah, we are back, bitches. So let's do this shit. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? For I know, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica. She smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Okay, so I'll leave Sayori for last, yeah, guys, because I just don't want her to, to get, like, upset when I try to share with her first, basically, and I just want her to be left alone right now. So... So since I was talking to Yuri, I might as well share it with Yuri first. Viper, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. A little envious even. I don't think you ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. I never did came naturally naturally to to me. I've but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. That's so Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling I'm so glad I got a chance to share my right. I never thought I would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you're never even shit it for anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, your smiles sadly. Viper, during lunchtime, I can eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always had some books with me. I could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway, but books are so full of amazing, inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. People you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know, those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body time. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you. I'm not a know-it-all, Viper. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I could do with them is read and write. But it wasn't, it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. That I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. 
just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Viper. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you're always treating me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy to see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined the club hoping I would make friends, and I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. This time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Oh, this is the second part of that of one of the previous poems. Ghost Under the Light Part 2. The, the, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, fading in the distance, a blue-green light fr flickers. I come figure and crosses, crosses its path, a silhouette, abstracting the airy glow. My heart pounds, the silhouette glows. Closer, closer, I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against the outstretched arm. The flickering light is a rhythm with the pounding of my heart. Teasing me for scrumbling to his forbidden emotion. Have you even heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laughed. Understanding it's overrated. I touch his hand. Flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I started to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just didn't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems being usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out that this one was about. I don't know if... I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you share it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see the faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to a warm touch. You can, uh, the poem is, once again, Yuri falls in form, fails to form a complete sentence. I, you mean I could keep it? Yuri nods. I love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she didn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return a favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I think 
You do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri tim timidly smiles at me, and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Next one, I'll do Natsuki. I bet she hates it. Yep. Let me go with Monica. Have you thought about what you want to submit to a foreign festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people I had to give some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whenever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem. I'm holding my hands. Your style is gone. So refined, Viper. Yuri's has been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spent with her. I think you've heard her say more words these people these past couple of days than she talks in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but it's pretty impressive. Well, I see. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting hang of it myself. They're certainly putting a lot of effort to it. You must really like her. But that's <laughs> it's awfully special, you know. Any time with her in the club room every day, Reading that edgy novel with her, well, I feel, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure that she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. All right, all right, I get you. Just be careful, right? You know, Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while Yuri's vulnerable, then it can be really hard for her. Her books are in a total escape from reality. They're just a fan age. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. Don't tell me that your ass is foreshadowing. Like, you better not be fucking foreshadowing, Monica. Because I swear to fucking God. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. <sighs> Moving on. Anyway. I'll share my poem with you, alright? Uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old t tale tells of a lady that wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all, all purpose, and all that was ever saw. And here I am, a fetter. Lost ad riff of the sky. Victim of the current of the wind. Af day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others had turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmer, glimmering the, tw the twilight sky. 
until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall and I fall, fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry gull, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I, I could speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, which amount to none. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with the breath, she blows me back flow. And I picked up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to, not to get too physiological or anything, but it was kind of my mind. So that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. But in a way, it's almost par paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, when the world starts to lose its me, you know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> you are surprised. I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, wouldn't we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. I mean, one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's my last writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something that you put much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot of easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and things you can work on. It's so much encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. And last, Sayori. Yes. Uh, it's nice, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you that you don't like it. Well, why don't you need to worry about what I think? After all, you're writing this for someone else, than you? Probably Yuri. Uh, I didn't write this for anyone specifically, baby. That's not really what meant, though. But it's okay. They're making new friends. Just like I was hoping. Making me really happy. Well, I don't think she's really happy on, on the inside. I'm guessing Sayori is thinking that, or at least in Yuri's version, or at least in Yuri's route, Sayori feels like she's being forgotten about by me. If, if there be times, I know there be times where certain friends make new friends and they might for, forget about you. And you're. Have you ever had that feeling where, and yeah, sometimes some people have that feeling that, that
that person that was friends with them for a long time began to make new friends and hang out with those new friends more than their long time friend. So, yeah. And I guess it's Sayori feel, feels left out, basically. So, you're happy too, right? This club, well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Viper. Sayori, is there something wrong? Uh, no, nothing. There is definitely something wrong with Yuri. No shit. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Sayori. There might be something. There's there's definitely something wrong with Sayori. There, I got it right, yeah, guys. This time. I'm just a little tired, okay? Uh, I don't think you're actually tired. I'm, I'm thinking you're just wondering about me. <laughs> All right. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else up now. If you insist. Yay. I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Oh my god, I wasn't feeling well, okay? See you tomorrow. Quick say anything else, Sayori che Chiri walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Okay, you three. I wonder how this version would go. Okay, same. Okay, same shit. Same shit. Okay, don't speak for the festival. Uh, this one, a bunch of people. Same thing, same fucking thing. Wait, hold on a second. I think something Sayori will like. And remember, this is Sayori's poem, basically. So you and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Oh, uh, well, maybe we're good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, th that may be the case, but maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show up in different ways, or even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than what you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Mm. I'm sure you're not reading into it much. <laughs> it could be. Gosh, you sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing is kind of gentle feel to it. You can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, he's your own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. Anyway, I'll share you my poem. You know, right? This is the same poem that she showed me in Yuri's route, yeah, guys. And same dialogue. And this dialogue is the same like the other one, yeah, guys. Except 
slightly different. I'm be I bet I the most different would be Yuri's and Sayori's. And it's the same tip that she gives, yeah, guys. I wonder how Yuri would respond. That different today, I guess so. That good, bad thing won't need her. I have my parenthesis, but it it would be unfair for me to call something good or bad based on it. It's always. I believe in most point is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid to disappoint you in some way or another. Uh, why me? Why are you always sympathetic? You're right. And I have the most advice to share. Is that so? Very thanks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Uh, for me, to have become someone opinion of it's fearsome how unluckable of me Yuri that's not a bad thing you're making it sound in your head it just meant that I respect your opinion I see I'm sorry that I always think that you come to some conclusions I'm just a little too used to it overthinking like this like Yuri what I mean that I'm saying, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on, all right. I just want to show you home now. Okay, here. Oh. So, basically, this one's different from Yuri's route of the poem, which was a sequel in, in her route, but in... Sayori's route, it's a different one, Beach. A more marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth catastrophically meets the surface under the clean blue sky and expanse of bliss, but beneath ga gag rolling clouds. An endless enigma, the easiest wood to get lost in. It's one where everything could be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your found foundations until you give in? Or will the sudden wave sent you cashing down in the blink of an eye. Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet, we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around the ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is the pet theopathic. Oh, I don't even know what the fuck this word is. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the fo foamy tendrils. Then back, and I abandon my peace tendor door at the, at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of a inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that that you don't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was assuming that we wrote about something similar in, much, in such different ways. Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. See, Natsuki didn't even let me read her poem. So I didn't, so I don't have much to contribute. I suppose to be better compare the differences in your writing styles, thought process. Anyway, it's, 
It was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she wants to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request, but, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, Sayori. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Holy Yuri. Uh, I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not what I really, that's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends. Just like I was hoping. Basically, wait. So basically, Sayori's dialogue is, is, is it, no not tell me it's the fucking same as the, the other route, yeah, guys. I thought it would have been different. I am definitely concerned about Sayori, y'all guys. Fucking Sayori. I'm really worried about her, y'all guys. Well, guessing that's it for the episode, yeah, guys. Because with with Sayori, something is definitely wrong about her, yeah, guys. So I'll see you guys next time.